Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing the requirements of school buildings. First, let us discuss grouping of class levels. As a student moves from nursery to higher levels, the process of imparting education becomes more and more involved. This demands addition of a number of facilities to the basic classroom unit depending upon the level and nature of the school. For this purpose, the class levels have been grouped into five categories as given in this table. These categories take into account the age group and the level of education to be imparted. Let us discuss the requirements of classroom. The basic unit of a school is classroom. The classroom, apart from satisfying the minimum requirements of space, fittings and furniture, shall be designed to meet the adequate functional and environmental requirements. The size of a classroom shall depend on the following. The first one is anthropometric dimensions of children and their space requirements, dimensions, arrangements of furniture and equipment and their incidence, number of students to be accommodated, types of activities to be carried out, and lastly, diverse seating arrangements essential for these activities. The number of classrooms in a school and the number of sections per class should depend upon the size and level of school and use efficiency of spaces. The classroom should be designed for the following number of student places. The first one is nursery. It should be designed for 20 to 25 student places. And primary and higher secondary should be designed for 40 student places. Let us discuss the area of classroom required. Area of classroom should be calculated on the basis of area needed per student place, which is given in this table. In the first category, which is preschool, the number of student places per classroom required is 20 to 25, and the gross area of classroom per student place required is 2 meters square. Essential construction requirements. Height of the classroom should not be less than 3 meter measured at any point from the surface of the floor to the lowest point of the ceiling. The minimum headroom, such as under the bottom of beams, fans and lights, shall be 2.6 meter measured vertically under such beam, light or fan. The proportion of breadth, which is the minimum dimension, to the length, which is the maximum dimension of the classroom should not be more than 1 is to 1.5. The sill height for classroom with furniture arrangements should not be more than 800 mm measured from the finished floor level and that for the classrooms with squatting arrangement should not be more than 600 mm. For the admission of light and air, rooms shall have one or more apertures, such as windows and fan lights, opening directly to the external air or into an open veranda. The minimum aggregate areas of such openings, excluding doors, inclusive of frames, shall not be less than 20% of the floor area in case such apertures are located in one wall and not less than 15% of the floor area in case such apertures are located on both side walls at the same sill level. Let us discuss classroom fittings. This table gives the information about the essential fittings required in a classroom, which are chalkboard, cupboard, and pinboard. And the next table gives the information about the fittings required in a classroom when needed, such as fans, light points, 
and students' desks. The students' desk depend upon the number of seats to be provided and whether the desks are single or double. In this figure, you can see the typical arrangement showing fan and light points in primary and secondary classrooms. In this figure, you can see the typical illustration of a primary classroom along with furniture arrangements. And in this figure, a typical illustration of secondary or higher secondary classroom is shown. This is a sketch showing alternate arrangements of furniture in secondary or higher secondary classroom. The reference I have used for this video is IS8827, which is Recommendations for Basic Requirements of School Buildings. Hello everyone. In this video, we will continue with the requirements of school buildings. In this video, we will discuss the requirements of teaching spaces other than classroom. The first one is science laboratories. The size of the science laboratories depend on the following. Dimensions of children and their space requirements flexibility of arrangement and multi-use of spaces, usefulness of wall area, and interrelationship of auxiliary spaces. The science laboratories should be designed for 24 seats. The science theory rooms related to laboratories should be designed on the basis of norms for a classroom for higher secondary classes. This table gives the requirement of teaching spaces other than classrooms. The first one is physics laboratory. The physics laboratory may have rooms such as the main laboratory room, store come preparation room, teacher space or room, and dark room. The total area required for physics laboratory comes out to be 96 meter square. The next one is chemistry laboratory. This shall have rooms such as the main laboratory room, store come preparation room, teacher space or room, and balance room. The total area for this laboratory comes out to be 96 meter square. Biology laboratory. This shall have rooms such as the main laboratory room, store come preparation room, teacher space or room, and museum. The total area for this laboratory also is 96 meter square. Here are some other rooms required in a school building, such as social science room, art room, crafts room, activity room, and science theory room. The social science room, art room, crafts room, and activity room may be designed for 40 students, but the area required for these rooms should be more than the area required for the ordinary classroom of 40 students in order to accommodate the teaching equipment, models, and activities pertaining to particular subjects. The provision of fittings and fixtures in the laboratories in a school shall depend upon the nature of the courses being conducted. This figure shows the typical illustration of physics laboratory. The dimensions are in millimeters. And this figure shows a typical illustration for a chemistry laboratory 
and here all the dimensions are in millimeters and this figure shows typical arrangement of fan and light points in a laboratory the reference i have used for this video is is8827 which is recommendations for basic requirements of school buildings Hello everyone. In this video, we will continue with the requirements of school buildings. We will be discussing administrative and student spaces. First, let us discuss administrative spaces. For preschool and primary school, an area of about 10 meter square may be provided for a room for headmistress or headmaster of the school. Another area of 10 meter square may be provided for general storage. For secondary and higher secondary schools, the provision of areas for the rooms for principal, vice principal, general office, etc. shall depend upon the total enrollment in the school. The size of the room for principal of the school may be governed by the space needed for parents' meeting waiting space and space for toilets vice principal's room generally the control of examination and records of the school is looked after by the vice principal the space for this room may be decided taking these factors into account in case there is no vice principal of the school the area of the above function may be provided suitably General Office Apart from the working space for general office staff, it should provide space for fee collection, students' contact, parents' contact, etc. Teaching Staff Area Staff Common Room, which may contain facilities for lockers for all teachers, office tables and chairs, easy chairs, and a separate toilet facility for staff should be provided in all secondary and higher secondary school. Let us discuss the student spaces now. When designing a school, provision of indoor areas for student activities appropriate to the level of school should be provided. The recommended administrative areas for secondary or higher secondary school which have an enrollment number up to 960 is given in this table. And for school which have an enrollment number from 960 to 920 is given in this table. Let us discuss the student spaces now. When designing a school, Provision of indoor areas for student activities appropriate to the level of the school shall be considered. The common room and canteen shall have a minimum area of 25 meters square and maximum of 100 meters square. One room for NCC or ACC or Scout shall be provided and it shall have a minimum area of 11 meters square. The medical inspection room shall have an area of 20 to 30 meters square and book or stationery shop shall have an area of 30 to 50 meters square. Minimum 50 meters square and maximum 150 meters square area shall be provided for library. Students club and house offices shall have an area of 30 to 50 meters square. 45 meters square should be provided for physical education and teaching room. Toilets shall have 0.2 meter square per student. Multi-use halls may be provided in a school and it shall have an area of 0.65 meter square per student for 50% of the strength. Outdoor areas. Outdoor areas for schools such as playgrounds, open air assembly, parking, etc. shall depend upon the following. The first one is the size of the school and the second one is the location of the school. 
that is urban suburban or rural for outdoor spaces under lawns courtyards etc an area of 1 meter square per student should be provided it is desirable to make a provision for play fields for all categories of schools the following areas should be adequate for playing games like cricket football hockey and other games an outdoor area of 1000 meter square should be provided for a preschool and 4000 meter square for primary school for secondary or higher secondary school an outdoor area of 15000 meter square shall be provided circulation area such as corridors entrance halls staircases etc in the school buildings with double loaded and single loaded corridors shall not be more than 18% and 24% of the total covered area of the building respectively let us discuss the functional requirements of school buildings this table gives the illumination levels for different work areas in a school for example in classrooms and on desktop and chalkboards the illumination level should be 150 to 200 lux the maximum acceptable noise levels in classrooms and other teaching spaces due to external sources should be 40 decibels level of ventilation in the classrooms and other teaching areas shall be 6 air changes per hour the reference i have used for this video is is8827 which is recommendations for basic requirements of school buildings hello everyone in this video we will continue with the requirements of school buildings overall area of school in this table the built up area per student place for different categories for a school having four section per class is given and in this table for a school having two sections per class is given setback lines in the absence of local building bylaws the minimum setbacks of a building from the boundaries shall be as follows the front setback shall be 15 meters and side setback shall be 6 meters while selecting the site of school buildings the following points should be kept in mind easy accessibility from residential areas site should be away from heavy traffic roads rivers ponds railway tracks etc site should be away from high tension lines the land should not be of made up ground unless precautions have been taken for stabilization site should ensure a good natural drainage and the site should preferably be at a quiet place away from places generating noise and pollution such as cinemas factories and shopping centers effect of landscape elements while planning the school building the importance of landscape elements such as open areas to increase the comfort conditions inside the building and also in the surrounding environment should be kept in mind plants hedges and shrubs planted immediately outside the classroom window where such windows are the principal source of natural light and ventilation should not protrude beyond the sill level the rows of tall or shady trees should be at right angles to the source of light to the building in order to avoid glare in the rooms at the same time the tall and shady trees walls or any obstruction in front of the classroom windows should be at a distance 
to ensure adequate amount of lighting and ventilation. This distance may be equal to the height of the building. The reference I have used for this video is IS8827, which is Recommendations for Basic Requirements of School Buildings. Hello everyone. In this video, we will continue with requirements of school buildings. We will discuss exit requirements in this video. The following general requirements shall apply to exits. All exits shall be free of obstructions. Exits shall be clearly visible and the routes to reach the exit shall be clearly marked and sign posted to guide the students to the floor concerned. All exit ways shall be properly illuminated. Exits shall be so arranged that they may be reached without passing through another occupied unit. Types of Exits Exits shall be either of horizontal or vertical type. An exit may be a doorway, corridor, an internal or external staircase, ramps or verandas or terraces which have access to the street or to the roof of a building. An exit may also include a horizontal exit leading to an adjoining building at the same level. Lifts and escalators shall not be considered as exits. Number and size of exits. The requisite number and size of exits shall be provided based on the number of students and staff in each room area and floor, capacity of exits, travel distance and height of buildings. Arrangement of exits Exits shall be so located that the distance from an exit to the most remote point in the floor area served by them Measured along the line of travel shall in no case be greater than 30 meters. Except that where sprinklers are installed throughout a building, the maximum distance of travel to an exit may be increased by 50%. Wherever more than one exit is required for a floor of building, exits shall be placed as remote from each other as possible. All the exits shall be accessible from entire floor area at all floor levels. Capacity of exits The capacity of exits, indicating the number of persons that could be safely evacuated through a unit exit width of 50 cm, shall be as given below. For stairways, it is 25 and for doors, it is 75. There shall be a minimum of two staircases and one of them shall be an enclosed stairway and the other shall be on the external walls of buildings and shall open directly to the exterior, interior open space or to any open place of safety. The minimum width of stairway shall be 2 meters. Let us discuss other requirements of individual exits. The first one is doorways. Every exit doorway shall open into an enclosed stairway, a horizontal exit, or a corridor, or passageway providing continuous and protected means of egress. Exit doorways shall open outwards, that is, away from the room, but shall not obstruct the travel along any exit. No door, when open, shall reduce the required width of stairway or landing to less than 90 cm, overhead or sliding doors shall not be installed. No exit doorway shall be less than 100 cm in width. Doorways shall be not less than 200 cm in height. Doorways for bathrooms, water closets, etc. shall be not less than 75 cm wide. Exit door shall not open immediately 
upon a flight of stairs. A landing equal to at least the width of the door shall be provided in the stairway at each doorway. Level of landing shall be the same as that of the floor which it serves. The next is stairways. The minimum tread shall be 30 centimeters. The treads shall be constructed and maintained in a manner to prevent slipping. The maximum height of riser shall be 15 centimeters. They shall be limited to 12 per flight. Handrails shall be provided with a minimum height of 90 centimeters from the center of the tread. The minimum headroom in a passage under the landing of a staircase and under the staircase shall be 2.2 meter. Fire escape or external stairs. Fire escapes shall not be taken into account in calculating the evacuation time of a building. All fire escapes shall be directly connected to the ground. Entrance to fire escape shall be separate and remote from the internal staircase. The route to fire escape shall be free of obstructions at all times, except a doorway leading to the fire escape which shall have the required fire resistance. Fire escapes shall be constructed of non-combustible materials. Fire escape stairs shall have straight flight not less than 75 cm wide with 15 cm threads and risers not more than 19 cm. The number of risers shall be limited to 16 per flight. Handrails shall be of a height not less than 90 cm. Use of spiral staircase shall be limited to low occupant load and to a building of height 9 meter. Unless they are connected to platforms such as balconies and terraces to allow escapes to pause. A spiral fire escape shall be not less than 150 cm in diameter and shall be designed to give adequate headroom. Ramps with a slope of not more than 1 in 10 may be substituted for and shall comply with all the applicable requirements of required stairways as to enclosure, capacity and limiting dimensions. Ramps shall be surfaced with approved non-slipping materials. Handrails shall be provided on both sides of the ramp. Ramps shall lead directly to outside open space at ground level or courtyards or safe places. The minimum width of a corridor shall not be less than 150 cm. In case of more than one main staircase of the building interconnected by a corridor or other enclosed space, there shall be at least one smoke stop door across the corridor or enclosed space between the doors in the enclosing walls of any two staircases. The reference I have used for this video is IS8827, which is recommendations for basic requirements of school buildings. Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing the provisions in National Building Code regarding educational buildings. The first category is pre-primary to secondary education. In this, pre-primary nursery school, which shall be built one for every 2500 population and the area of school shall be 0 0.08 hectare. And the location of pre-primary or nursery school shall be near a park. The next is primary school which includes class from 1 to 5. This shall be built one for every 5000 population and the strength of the school shall be 500 students. The total area per school shall be 0.4 hectare. School building area shall be 0.4 hectare. And the play field area shall be with a minimum of 18 by 36 meter to be ensured for effective play 
and it shall have minimum land area as 0.2 hectare which is inclusive of the limited parking requirement for functional uses. The next is senior secondary school which includes class 6 to 12 and it shall be built one for every 7500 population and the strength of the school shall be 1000 students. The total area per school shall be 1.8 hectare, school building area 0.6 hectare and the play field area with a minimum dimension of 68 by 126 meter shall be 1 hectare and the parking area 0.2 hectare. Integrated school without hostel facility. This shall include class 1 to 12 and it shall be built one for every 90,000 to 1 lakh population. Strength of school shall be 1,500 students and the minimum area per school shall be 3.5 hectares, school building area 0.7 hectares, play field area 2.5 hectares and parking area 0.3 hectares. This should be located near a sport facility. Integrated school with hostel facilities which shall include class 1 to 12 and it shall be built one for every 90,000 to 1 lakh population. Strength of the school shall be 1,500 students and the total area per school shall be 3.9 hectare school building area 0.7 hectare, play field area 2.5 hectare, residential including the hostel area shall be 0.4 hectare, parking area 0.3 hectare and the location shall be near a sport facility. And the next one is school for children with disabilities from class 1 to 12 and it shall be built one for every 45,000 population. The strength of the school shall be 400 students. Area per school shall be 0.7 hectare. School building area 0.2 hectare. Play field area 0.3 hectare. Parking area 0.2 hectare. And for this also, the location shall be near a park or sport facility. The schools should be inclusive, providing education to all the children, including those with disabilities. However, it may be required to have exclusive schools in case of certain disabilities such as speech, hearing, sight and multiple disabilities. And the last one in this category is school for children with intellectual and developmental disabilities. It shall be built one for every one lakh population. Total area per school shall be 0.2 hectare and the location of pre-primary or nursery school should be near a park and non-noise polluting zone. The schools should preferably face service roads and roads with less traffic intensity. The next category is higher education. The first point in this is college which shall be built one for every 1,25,000 population. The strength of the college shall be 1,000 to 1,500 students. Total area per college shall be 5 hectare. College building area 1.8 hectare. Play field area 2.5 hectare. Residential which include hostel area shall be 0.4 hectare. And parking area 0.3 hectare. The next in this category is University Campus. The total area shall range from 10 to 60 hectare. Residential area, if included, shall be 25% of the total land area. Sports and cultural activities shall be 15% of the total land area. Parks and landscape, including the green belt, should also be 15% of the total land area. The next category is technical education. 
In this, the first point is technical education center, which shall be built one for every one lakh population, and it shall include one industrial training institute and one polytechnic. The strength of ITI shall be four hundred students, and that of polytechnic shall be five hundred students. Area per technical education center will be four hectare. Area for ITI one point six hectare. And area for polytechnic shall be two point four hectare. The next category in technical education center shall be built one for every one lakh population to include one ITI, one technical center, and one coaching center. Area per technical education center shall be four hectare. Area for ITI one point six hectare. Area for technical center. 2.1 hectare and area for coaching center shall be 0.3 hectare the next category is professional education and the first point in this is engineering college which shall be built one for every 1 lakh population and the strength of the college shall be 1500 students and the area per college shall be 6 hectare the next is medical college which shall be built one for every one lakh population and the area of site including space for general hospital shall be 15 hectare. And the last point in this category is nursing and paramedic institute which shall be built one for every one lakh population and the plot area per institute which shall subject to nursing council of India or Ministry of Health norms and the minimum land area required for this is 0 0.2 hectare. Hello everyone. In this video we will be drawing a plan of junior college in AutoCAD. This is the image of the plan that we will be drawing in AutoCAD. Before starting any drawing, you need to make sure that you are using the correct units to draw the plan. For this, use the units command. I'll be drawing this plan in the metric system. So, I will choose decimal over here and the precision I will keep it as 0.00. .00. And in the insertion scale, you can choose meters. Now let's start drawing. First thing, I'll draw the entrance porch for the junior college. The length of the porch, I will keep it as 8.75 meter. And then the width of the porch, I will keep it as 15.68 meter. And you can draw this by using the offset command. By using the offset command again, I will draw the wall thickness, which will be 0.23 meter. We need to draw stairs in front of the porch. So let us draw that. The width of the tread I will keep it as 0.3 meter. Beside the porch, we will draw administrative office. For this, I will use the rectangle command. Enter D for specifying the dimensions. I will keep the length as 7 meter and width as 4.65 meter. Then use the offset command to draw the wall thickness.
Beside the administrative office, we will provide principal's room. For this, the length I will keep it as 4.9 meter and width 4.65 meter. Then draw the wall thickness. As we have provided principal's room over here, beside it, we will provide vice principal's room. The length will be 4 meter and width 4.65 meter. Then draw the wall thickness. Beside the vice principal's room, we will provide a records room. The length will be 7.5 meter and width 8.35 meter. Then draw the wall thickness. We will provide a passage in front of all of these rooms. So for that, Draw a line over here and then draw its wall thickness. As this much entrance is not sufficient, so we will use the offset command and provide an entrance of 1.5 meter. and then trim these lines. Similarly, we will provide doors for all of these rooms. For drawing the entrance for the administrative room, draw a line equal to the wall thickness and then by using the offset command, specify the width for the entrance. I will give it as 1.5 meter. And then trim these lines. Repeat the same steps for the other rooms. Above this records room, we will provide a classroom. Using the rectangle command, specify the dimensions. The length will be 6 meter and width will be 8.3 meter. And then use the offset command to specify the thickness of the wall. We will provide one more classroom above this which will have the same dimensions. So, copy this classroom which we have drawn. Beside this classroom, we will provide stairs to go to the first floor. The length of one stair, I will keep it as 1.5 meter. Using the offset command, draw the steps. The width of the tread, I will keep it as 0.25 meter. So use the offset command and specify the distance as 0.25 meter.
type M to draw multiple offsets. Now that we have drawn a first flight of our stairs, provide a wall thickness over here which will accommodate the railing. And then by using the mirror command, you can draw the second flight of stairs. Select all the stairs, then enter MI for mirror. Then select the midpoint of this wall thickness. Do not erase the source object. After drawing the stairs, we will provide a computer lab beside the stairs. The length will be 10.13 meter and width 10 meter. Use the offset command to draw the wall thickness. In front of this classroom, we will provide a passage of 3 meter. To reach these classroom, we need to also provide a passage over here. So we will provide a passage of 2.2 meter. And now you can use this intersection point to draw the classroom. The classroom will be of same dimension as this classroom. So copy this. And then place it over here. And then delete these lines. Beside the classroom, we will provide a medical room. Which will have the dimension as 3.93 as the length and 5.5 .5 as the width. Then draw the wall thickness. Above this, we will provide a staff room. Which will have length 6.84 meter and width 11.88 meter. Draw the wall thickness. And then trim these unnecessary lines. Now let us provide WC units over here. I will provide a passage in front of this of 3 meter. Now we can use this point as a reference for drawing the WC units. Specify the length as 6.7 meter and width as 4.9 meter. Then draw the wall thickness. Draw a line down the center. And give the offset distance as 0.5 on either side. And then delete this line. Extend both of these lines. Now we'll provide entrance for both of these WC units.
So in this way, we have provided WC units for both male and female over here. To provide privacy for the WC units, we will draw a wall in front of it. So draw a line over here and by using the move command, move the line at a distance of 1.75 meter. Hello everyone, in this video we will be drawing a plan of junior college in AutoCAD. Now let us draw a staircase in front of this porch. Beside this room, I will provide a passage of 6.65 meter. This will be a reference for drawing the staircase. The length of the staircase will be 11.2 meter and width will be 6.6 .6 meter. Now let us draw a line in the middle. Use the offset command and give the offset distance as 2.5 meter and draw offset on either side. And then delete the line in the middle. And then draw a landing of 3 meter over here. Trim these lines and use the explode command to explode this line. Use the offset command to draw the steps. I will keep the width of the tread as 0.3 meter. Type M for drawing multiple offsets. Then draw an offset of 0 0.075 meter on either side of these lines. And then delete the line in the middle. And also trim these lines. Specify wall thickness for this staircase room and use the fillet command to join these lines. So this is the first flight of stair and then you come on to the landing over here and then you can choose to go from the left or the right staircase to go on to the first floor. Behind the staircase, we will leave some space and provide a stage over here for cultural activities in the college. I will use this WC unit as a reference to draw the stage. I will provide an offset distance of 8.9 meter from here. And using this line as a reference, we will draw a stage. The stage will be of the dimension 7 meter by 3 meter. And then delete this line.
specify the tread width as 0.3 meter. And then use the mirror command to draw steps on this side. Behind the stage, I will provide canteen room of the dimensions 7 meter by 5.27 meter. As you can see, this building is fairly symmetrical. So, we have already drawn the half of the building. So, we will draw the other half by using the mirror command. Let us draw the other half of the building now. So, let us select objects we want to mirror, which is this whole half of the building. Enter MI for mirror and specify the midpoint of these steps. Do not erase the source object. Now you need to trim these intersecting lines in the plan. As you can see, I have trimmed all the lines and I have made some necessary changes in the plan over here. This will be our waiting room and then this will be the library. I have also provided steps over here and here. Now that we have finished drawing the plan, let us add windows to it. For this, we will use the rectangle command. Specify the first point, then enter D for specifying the dimensions. I will enter the length of the window as 2 meter and the width of the window will be equal to the width of the wall that is 0.23 meter. Let us also draw a chajja in front of the window. For turning this window into a block, use the block command. Enter the name for the block. For this window, I will give it as W1. Select the pick point. And then select the whole object and then press enter. Now your block has been created and you can delete this. For entering the window into the plan, click on the insert drop down and here you can see the block which you have created. Select it.
in the same way you can add windows to your entire plan here you can see i have added windows to the entire plan make sure that when you add windows to the interior part of the plan you do not add chhajjas to it after adding the windows we need to add text and dimensions to each of the rooms so for that first you need to measure the room Measure the room from the inner part of the wall. Now measure the horizontal dimension. Activate the text command by entering T in the command line. This particular room is the record room. I will reduce the height of the text from here. After specifying the name of the room, we need to give its dimensions. Make sure that you enter the horizontal dimension first and then the vertical dimension. Later you can delete these dimensions. Similarly, you can use the steps to add text and dimensions to each of the room of the plan. Here you can see I have entered the dimensions and name of the rooms in the plan. Using the same steps which we have used to draw the ground floor plan, I have drawn the first floor plan. Hello everyone, in this video we will be drawing the front elevation of a junior college in AutoCAD. Now that we have finished drawing our ground floor plan and first floor plan, we will start drawing the front elevation. While drawing the front elevation, you need to keep in mind that you will be looking the building from this side and all the details present on this side of the building will be visible in the front elevation. The whole length of the building on this side will be visible in the front elevation. So let us draw that first. So for this, I will use the Excel line command and enter V to draw vertical lines. Draw lines at the edges of the building. This will give you the length of the building. This will be your ground level. Using the offset command, draw the height of the plinth level, which will be 0.6 meter. After this, draw the height of the ground floor, which is 3.9 meter. This will also be the height for the first floor. After this, draw the parapet wall, which will be of the height 1 meter. Now you can delete these lines.
Next, we will draw the stairs in front of the porch. So for this again, I will use Excel line. Draw lines at the edges of the steps. Using the offset command, draw the steps. The height of the riser is 0.15 meter, so type in the offset distance as 0.15 meter as well. Enter M for drawing multiple offsets. And now you can delete these two lines. After drawing steps in front of the porch, the first flight of this staircase will also be visible in the front elevation. So let us draw that now. Draw vertical lines at the edges of the step. Draw the height up to which the staircase will be visible. Then by using the offset command, draw the steps. Now let us draw windows in our front elevation. So first I will draw a window and then convert it into a block and then insert it into our front elevation. Enter the dimensions of the window. Using the offset command, specify the offset distance as 0.08 meter and draw the offset for the rectangle. And draw a line equivalent to the projection of the chajja and then trim these lines. To convert this window into a block, use the block command. Enter the name for the block. Specify the pick point. And then select the object. If you go into the insert drop down, you can see the block which you have created. Now we will specify the positions of the window in a front elevation.
draw vertical lines at the edges of the window. The windows are at a height of 1.28 meter from the finished floor level. So draw a line of this height. Go in the insert drop down box and select the block. In this way, place the block in your front elevation. Then delete all these lines. Using these similar steps, you can add the rest of the windows in the ground floor as well as for the first floor. As you can see, I have drawn all the windows for the ground floor and first floor. The next thing we need to draw are these edges of the building over here and here. Draw vertical lines at these edges. Draw over these lines. and then delete these excel lines. You can also provide hatching for the windows. For this, use the hatch command. The hatching pattern is not visible. For this, you need to change the scale. And with this, our front elevation is now complete. Hello everyone. In this video, we will be drawing sectional elevation of a junior college in AutoCAD. Now that we have finished drawing a front elevation, let us draw the sectional elevation. Before drawing the sectional elevation, we need to decide from where the section line should pass. It is recommended that the section line should pass from the staircase or through the WC unit. So for this plan, I have drawn the section line through this part of the plan. In the sectional elevation, this whole length will be visible. So let us draw that with Excel lines. After drawing the edges of the building, draw a horizontal line. This will be our ground level. 
Now we will draw the layers and the plinth level. For this use the offset command. And the first layer will be of murum. And the second layer will be of rubble. And the third layer will be of concrete. Let us draw the floor to floor height in the sectional elevation now. The floor to floor height is 3.9 meter, so type in the offset distance as 3.9 meter. This will be the height for the ground floor. And then this will be the height for the first floor. Let us draw the details in the sectional elevation now. First, you will be able to see the thickness of this wall. So let us draw that with Excel line command. And the edge of this wall will also be visible. And then the thickness of this wall. And lastly of this wall. Now we will trim the lines we don't need such as these and these. Now we will provide slab for both ground floor and first floor. For this use the offset command and type in the offset distance as 0.1 meter which will be the depth of the slab. Now let us draw the staircase in a section elevation. This is the starting point of the staircase. We will start drawing a staircase from here. The height of the riser is 0.15 meter and the width of the tread is 0.25 meter. After you have drawn your first step, you can delete this line and then simply copy this step, specifying this as the base point. Let us draw a landing over here. The thickness of the landing slab I will take it as 0.1 meter. We also need to provide a beam below the landing slab. So I will provide a beam of 0.38 meter. And then join this line to draw the bottom of the steps. To draw the second flight of the step, select this flight of staircase and then use the mirror command. Do not erase the source object 
and then simply copy this and place it above here. Extend this line and then trim these lines. Now we have drawn the staircase from ground floor to the first floor. Let us provide steps for the first floor as well. For that all you need to do is again select this flight of staircase. And then copy it and place it above over here. Now let us draw windows in our sectional elevation. So, this window will be visible and also these windows will be visible in a sectional elevation. The windows are located at a height of 1.2 meter. And the height of the window is also 1.2 meter. So, use the offset command for this. The chajja in front of the window will also be visible, so let us draw that. Similarly, I have drawn the rest of the windows. And also, I have drawn the headroom for the staircase as well. Next, we will draw the parapet wall over here, which will have a height of 1 meter. Our sectional elevation is almost complete. We need to provide hatching for different areas now. For this, use the hatch command. You can adjust the hatching scale from here. Similarly, you can provide hatching for the rest of the sectional elevation. As you can see, I have provided hatching for the walls, concrete in the staircase and also and also in the plinth level. And with this our sectional elevation is now complete. 
Do not forget to mention the unit in which you have drawn the drawing. And always remember to draw the direction of north in your drawing. 